Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and this is yet another video review. Today I will be looking at the Epox EP4B2A2 motherboard. This is the product itself, and uh, have a look here at what is actually included with this. Of course, you get the software and the manual. You also get a handy extra two port USB cable, and of course, you get the one. 80 pin cable for the ATA 100 hard drives and another IDE cable and the floppy cable as well. This is the Pentium 4 motherboard from Epox and as you can see here this is where the Pentium 4 478 pin CPU would be installed. To the right of that you can see that this is where the memory the memory on this board it uses the standard SD RAM memory and to the right of that is the floppy controller and a little bit further down here you'll notice that you have all of the IDE connectors in one place now I really like this idea having all of these in a row is a fantastic idea the blue ones there are just the standard IDE ATA100 connectors and the ones below that there are for the RAID configuration. This board has of course one AGB connector and it has one, two, three, four, five, six PCI connectors and one CNR connector here as well. And like other Pentium 4 motherboards you will need to have a Pentium 4 power supply to connect to this motherboard. You can see a connector right here as well as right here. If you look on the side where you would connect your keyboards and USB ports, here of course is the mouse. This is the keyboard. You have your two USB ports, COM ports right here, parallel right here. You have your game port right here and this is actually sound so this motherboard does come with sound on board I would like to bring your attention back to this area right here of the motherboard of course I mentioned earlier how I like the layout of this it's all together in one place this makes sense certainly something else that makes a lot of sense is the way that this is laid out now what this is right here is where you would be connecting your your power button, your speaker, and so on, your reset, your hard drive, and this is very easy to understand. It's all labeled and it's all in one line. Very, very good idea to have. I think most motherboard manufacturers should do this. Make it simple. Make it such that you really don't have to refer to your uh, motherboard manual to connect up to these connectors. Now something else I'm sure you've noticed here is the display. This is what's called a post code display. This will post codes depending on the problem with the motherboard. So this makes it very easy to diagnose a problem with this motherboard. Let me now turn on the motherboard and you can actually see it booting up and see it going through the codes. Now of course I have no video card connected. I have no hard drives connected and so on and so forth on this so you're just going to see a lot of codes here popping up as well and of course the problem if you have a problem you can refer to the appendix in the manual and you can actually do some diagnostics and find the problem uh, certainly a great idea to have on any motherboard for doing diagnostics something else I would like to note on this motherboard is the AGP slot this slot has a little tab here at the end which you can pop up once your video card is installed. This is an excellent idea for the simple fact that when you put your video card in, certainly you do not want it slipping out or popping out. Depending on what you're doing inside your case or your motherboard, this is an excellent feature and certainly ensures that your video card is going to stay seated very well. Let me now get this system up and running and I can show you the BIOS features as well as some results 
in the operating system. First thing here at the top left, which is in the case of most motherboards, the standard CMOS features. And in here, of course, you're looking at setting the time, the date, and of course, adjusting your uh, IDE drives, your floppy drives, and so on. Next one down is the advanced BIOS features. In here, you have the choice of, of enabling or disabling the CPU L1 and L2 cache. Uh, other things in here include the hard drive SMART compatibility. You can enable or disable that feature in here as well. Going on here, we have the advanced chipset features. Now, in here is where you would set your memory timing. For instance, your uh, latency time could be two or three, or you can set it to auto. You can, of course, set the timing to normal by speed, or you can set it to turbo. And, of course, you have the option here of entering other manual settings. If we go further down here, you have the option in here, here as well of enabling or disabling the system BIOS, cacheable, video cacheable, video RAM cacheable, and so on. Here we have the integrated peripherals. This is very standard to many motherboards. The power management, of course, in here you have the option for your computer to power down at a certain time, power up at a certain time, and other features uh, such as resume upon incoming call on your modem and that kind of thing. And also in the plug and play, the PCI configurations in here, this is a very standard part of almost any kind of BIOS you'll see these days. PC health status again becoming very very common showing you the thresholds of your CPU temperatures which you can set and actually there's a, a temperature shutdown, a system shutdown in this as well. Of course this one as well has features like the CPU temperature and the current system temperature as well. Now let me just go over this feature. This is a very, very cool feature to have in a motherboard. You can actually set a threshold for the system to warn you when the system reaches a certain temperature. And in my case, I set it to 56, as you can see here. Now there's also another uh, temperature which you can set further down here at the end, and that's called a shutdown temperature. Now what that does, I have it at 65 degrees C. So let's say for instance your CPU fan was to stop. Of course the CPU temperature would raise quite rapidly and approach whatever threshold you set here. In my case 65, it would then of course for first warn me and then it would of course shut down the system. Now this temperature can be anything really. You can set it to whatever you think you want the system to shut down at. Again, very handy feature if your fan was to stop or even if your cooler was to pop off somehow off your CPU. Certainly save your system and your CPU. So a very, very handy feature certainly to have. And many motherboards actually are coming these days with this kind of feature on it. Now, here on the top right we have the